Now let's get practical and talk about the steps that we need to take when we want to design our fact table. Usually there are a few key decisions that we need to take when we want to design our fact tables. And basically or luckily there are just four key decisions that we need to take when we want to design our fact tables. And we take those key decisions by answering questions about our business needs. So when we want to make those decisions, we need to consider the business needs and with that we can answer or take those key decisions and then from that we can design our tables and our columns. So we have basically laid out the design of our fact table. Now what are these key steps that we need to take? First we want to start with identifying the actual business process that we want to analyze. For example, this can be we want to analyze our sales, we want to analyze the order processing, the order fulfillment or anything else that is a business process that we want to analyze. For example, as we've seen in here, this can be a sales table and we have the different aspects included in here. Now the second step that we need to take when we want to design our fact table is to define the grain. We've already talked about the grain. This is basically the level of detail in our table and this is a crucial decision because this is an important aspect in our analysis. And the grain, as we have learned, is just defining what is one row referring to. So one row is equal basically to one transaction, one order that has taken place, or also we can have, as we've seen with the periodic snapshot fact tables, some periods as a grain, for example, daily, or also a combination of daily and a location. So every day for every certain location. And I also recommend to rather go with a finer grain, so with a higher level of detail. So usually if we have every single transaction and it is not pre-aggregated, this is a better option, a better path to go. Because this will leave us open for all the different aspects of analysis. And we don't need to make any presumptions with pre-aggregated data. Because if we have pre-aggregated data, this will limit the way we can analyze this data later on. And we have most of the options available if we go with a more atomic transactional grain. And then later on we can still aggregate the data for our data marts for specific use cases if we have those specific use cases in our data marts. So therefore if you want to define the grain you should rather use a more fine grain so a more atomic level with a higher level of detail. The next step would be to identify the dimensions that are relevant. And we can do that by just going to the questions what is happening, when it is happening, where, how and why. So if we focus on these words then we can also find our different dimensions. For example it can be different time aspects, locations, products, customers and so on. Whatever is important in our business scenario. So these are the dimensions of course that are giving us the option to filter and group our data. So basically they are the entry points for our data analysis. And therefore we also refer to them sometimes as the soul of our data warehouse for our data analysis. And now the last step is just to identify the facts for our measurements and then we can aggregate them if necessary for the defined grain. So these are the steps that we want to take and these are the steps that we should take if we want to design and lay out our fact tables. And later on we'll also focus a bit more on the ETL aspects but it's always good to keep those steps in mind when we are designing our fact tables.